These video instructions are to be used in conjunction with the instructions for sewing your first coil bow. I'm using cord bought from Walmart, and you can see what I've used here, 3 16th inch by 100 feet, um, 90 pounds, it's a hyper tough, it's a braided rope. I'm going to be using purple glue. This is washable school glue by Elmer's. Um, it shows up on the rope. You can use other ropes. Some people tell me that this purple comes back on them. I've never had that experience, but if you have, you might wanna use just the white glue. I'm also using three quarter inch strips. I happen to be using batik. You can use any kind you want. They're easier to wrap if you cut these on the bias. So here's the first step. Your rope comes with a little burnt in. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna cut that off. Then you wanna pull a little bit of this polyester out and you discard that. Next, you wanna take your nice purple glue and see how it shows up. You can see what you're doing. Liberally apply that glue. Apply it to your little strip. You want your strip to be up like this. You want your cord to be on your right. Then, Take that strip and let's cover that end. Then you want to go from the back and flip to the front. Now what I like to do, I like to take my glue and go down like this. Other people just like to put a little dot. I find that making that strip of glue helps this fabric to adhere. It just makes it easier for me to maintain control. Now, you wanna always make sure that your strip has the high end on the right and not the left. So what you do is you just cut it. And I wanna show you why that's important. When I go to add my next strip, notice I put glue here. It sticks and you wrap that little edge. If you do it the other way, you'll have little pieces sticking up and they can get caught in your sewing machine. And then you'll find yourself having to push. Now, I'm gonna add one more. And you can see over here that I'm having trouble. I don't have enough rope out. I'm going to take my rope and I'm gonna flip it like this. What that does is it maintains the integrity of my rope. It keeps the twist out of it and that will maintain the integrity of your bow. So making sure that my strip up here is to the right, going down to the left. And it really doesn't make any difference which way it's cut down here. It could even be straight across, it just doesn't matter. And right now, you will continue to do this all the way until you finish wrapping a whole thing of rope that will make say three small bows or one large bow. 
in my next ses section, I will show you how to get your coil started. And then I'll have another section that we'll continue with on um, making the bowl itself. All right, I wanna show you again how to make that coil. Just flip it. And then put your pins in the 12 o'clock, three o'clock position to hold your coil in place. Take it to your sewing machine and make your X of stitching that holds that coil together. All right, I have my sewing machine set for straight stitch. The fig dogs are up. I have an open toe foot here. I'm going to place it so that your last coil acts as a, a resting place for your foot that keeps your foot from getting caught on that coil. So let's go ahead and make our X to secure the, the coil. Take pins out as necessary. If you want, you can back stitch here just to hold it a little bit. Do the same thing so that you can get this X made. Go slowly. You may have to push a little bit with your stiletto, but do it gently. Let your mach machine do the work if it will. Take out your other pin, cut off these tails. Notice I've used non-matching thread. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Now we're going to do the zigzag part. I set, I have a Janome, I set my machine at stitch 10, but you want a zigzag stitch. I usually set the width at four three or four four, you wanna make sure that your zigzag will catch both coils. My stitch in, in between stitches, I usually set it about one three. This makes a real tight, a sort of tight zigzag and that makes for a very sturdy bow. I'm going to slowly zigzag this coil. This is the hardest part of the bow. So we're zigzagging back and forth. We start in the middle. Some people say on their machines they actually have to do this part by hand with the machine to get it to work for them. Whatever works for you, and like I said, you'll be repositioning, but you wanna start in the middle, get both sides of these coils going. Now you see, I'm having trouble with this. You can raise your foot like that, twist that around, and just, you keep going. Do notice that this tail stays on your right hand side.
And so you can see that this gets easier after a while. You let your sewing machine do the work. Your feed dogs will pull this, especially after this coil gets a little bit bigger. I do want to remind you to keep your big hank of rope on your left hand side when you need to unfurl it. Just do it a little bit at a time. Um, that will help keep the, in the integrity of your bow without your, your rope twisting and possibly not securing correctly. We're gonna stop here. I do want, you will make about 15 or 16 rounds. And then the next segment, I will show you how to flip the bow so that you can make the sides of your bow. All right, once you get your 15 or 16 rounds done, you wanna take it off the sewing machine, hold it up to the light and see if you've missed any spots. If you have, the light will show through and you can go back and zigzag over that. It won't show, especially if you're using the same color as your bow, your thread color. Um, then you want to put a piece of tape and this is going to mark where you start turning your bow so that you can make your sides. You'll notice that on mine, I've put a number 10, that's the stitch that I'm using. And these are 4.3, that's how wide my zigzag is, and 1.3, that's how far apart my zigzags are. Um, I may go eat lunch and come back, somebody turns off my sewing machine, or I turn it off, and I don't have to remember what settings I used, it's on my tape. What we're gonna do is we're gonna continue flat up to this edge of this marking. So let me get up to there. Now, I want you to notice my hand position. I'm going to just barely lift my start of my bow I'm gonna make one revolution, so bear with me while I make that revolution. You wanna make sure that you keep your hand in that same place. You're gonna make, you want to maintain the integrity of your bow all the way back to where that tape edge is, where we started our lift. back to that beginning. Now what we want to do is lift it a little bit more. Maybe that's about a 45 degree angle. 
and go around one more time. You'll notice the sewing machine is doing all the work. It's the feed dogs are pulling. And I do apologize, I know this is like watching paint dry, but this is where the shape of your bowl begins. Now we're back to that beginning again. I'm going to unfurl some more of the cord. This is your last, this is where your bow will form the rest of the way, all the way up. You're gonna put it to the nose of your machine and this is what you maintain for the rest of your bow. Um, again, you go around, and you hold it up to your machine. And you do this for the remainder of your bow. I will say that depending on the nose of your machine here, it will help shape your bow. Some have a short nose and you can maintain almost a straight up bow side. And my bows tend to go like this because of the shape of my machine. You continue this for the rest of your bow. All right, I have finished up my bow. I wanted to show you how much cord I have left over. Um, this is probably about six inches tall, maybe a little bit taller. Uh, I tried to stop my bow at the same measurement where I had been stopping and starting the uh, coil for the bow. Just I th To me, it makes it more even. What you can do, there's simple little endings. Let me show you this one. You can just taper off to the end if you want to do that. Now on this one, instead of just tapering it off to the end, I made another coil. This is probably about 12 or 13 inches of cord. And I also put a bead over it just for decoration. Uh, you can use E6000 glue to glue all of this together. You could also take stitches to hold your coil to the bow. E either one's okay. The bead also has, uh, like would be for a necklace, I usually E6000 it and I also put some stitches through the beading hose. So that's one way that you can end your project. Another way, you'll cut off, say, six inches. You'll pull off, pull out that um, polyester on the inside about an inch so that you can taper that back through and you just loop it around. So here, so here, and you have another simple ending to your bow. This is another very simple ending. Uh, I stopped here. This looks like it's uh, maybe six or seven inches. And I just made a loop. Again, I pulled out that extra so that I could sort of taper this end. This I just spot um, a spot stitch. You could also E6000 glue it, fabric fusion, whatever 
makes you happy, whatever works for you. These are just some simple endings on the way uh, that you can finish your bow. This is also where your creativity and your artistry comes in. Um, you can look at Pinterest for ideas and just um, go ahead and finish your bow anyway that makes you happy.